Jack Crevel. Many consider this species a trash fish. Well, I don't know about you, but for me, I don't call a fish that smashes your plug out of the water, then turns on a dime at full speed, making your reel scream for mercy, trash. These fork tail eating machines don't apologize for stealing your lure, and that is the adrenaline rush I seek from fish. This is what gets me up way before the rest of the world, with a storm looming just so I can get into a fight with a fish that doesn't have the word quit in their vocabulary. Trash fish? Not hardly. This is an ideal fish if you're looking for a fight. The Captain's Log with Captain Jonathan Moss, presented by Florida Fishing Products. Okay. Overcast morning. I think we just might get lucky on the rain, dude. I hope so, man. We were pretty, pretty good about it all July. First two weeks of August, we got an unreal amount of rain. But uh, it's been nice this week. Well, the flag ain't moving there. Yeah, that's good. That's so what we want for we doing out this. There, be slicked out, do some sight fishing. So hopefully, get a little break in the clouds, get some sun to see them. Yep. Yeah. And uh, heading out on the lake. Yep. Yeah. Lake, lake Pontchartrain, Pontchartrain, man. No deal, man. Well, Louisiana is a special place. Love fishing here and uh, haven't fished the lake before. Yeah, it's a whole different world up here. I mean, it's the lake's kind of like its own estuary in a sense. It's only got a few ways in or out. Um, my biggest thing for the lake is what we're, we're, we're going to try and start to do is um, the jacks. The jacks come in here. I think it's more of a pre-spawn thing. They come in here and we get massive groups of mullet and all, and they come in here eating mullet, eating pogies. Um, crabs, really, Busting whatever. Busting the surface just and going bananas. Everything, just <laughs> killing. That's that's one. Causing that's all havoc. they do. They were put on this earth to kill and like make the lives of other fish hell. But uh, yeah, a lot of people just don't mess with the jacks. You know, they're thought of as a trash fish. And you know, here in Louisiana, everybody's trying to eat everything. So yeah. they can't eat it. They don't really want to catch it. That's well, good for us today, cause oh, yeah. we want to play with them. <laughs> yep. Awesome. Hi, right, brother. Get out of that channel and take off. So we're out here trying to really just fishing for the, oh, that's a good blow up, fishing for these big jacks. You're really just trying to make a mad. Like, see, I'm just throwing this oh teaser <laughs> to make a mad. And Jonathan's throwing a Got whopper plopper. on, we're on. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you were kidding, dude. I told you, it's Bring chaos, him man. up. Fire it's him up chaos. on the surface of that popper with nothing on it. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty much what you do, this is my favorite part about jack fishing. I just like teasing them. Pretty much what I like to do is just tease them up with clients, throwing just a wood popper like that. You can see this thing is chewed to absolute. Like That's an amazing. But uh, you just fire them up, man. You got to really make them mad. They get pretty smart sometimes, <laughs> even though they're jacks, but. Sick. It's all about making them mad. I'd say on average, these fish rain the smallest, 22 to 25 pounds. This time of year, in the September, I feel like a lot of the big females show up and they range anywhere from, I think the biggest ones I've had are near that 40 pound range. But not really many off of, off of that. That's I don't really care how hey, big know, they are. They're just so you incredible. You said it on the way out. 
<laughs> you know, people call these trash fish. This is, have that explosion oh, yeah. on the surface? <laughs> an eight foot heavy rod, an 8,000 reel. Yeah. Put in this fight, this bend. Dude, that's, there ain't nothing trashy about it, bro. Oh yeah, that's what I tell people too when they, they're like, man, why you use such heavy stuff? I mean, I'm using really heavy rods and reels, stuff you catch yellowfin tuna on. But it's, uh, we fish around a lot of structure for one, but two, the thing with jacks, it can be a real short fight. You gotta break their spirit super fast. Like this one's probably close to the boat by now because you put the heat on them. But a lot of times people just don't put enough heat on them and they fight them for an hour. The He's good, he's gonna hang out under there and do the circles of death for a bit. That's what wears you out fly fishing them right there, the circles of death. There you go. And there's about 10 feet of water under us. So they get down there and they start circling and they they don't want to come up. As soon as they come up and suck air, they usually chill out a bit. And that's when we'll grab them. I might try and net him. He looks like a small enough one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that bruiser, bro. Let's net him real quick. Jolly, dude. Yeah. One of the smaller ones there, but it's a stud. That ain't small, dude. <laughs> Should have brought a bigger net. <laughs> <laughs> so these are some of the younger ones. You could tell they get all in pretty colors and all. Real pretty fish. Doesn't look too beat up. Either. Yeah, not not beat up really at all. The bigger ones are all beat up and old and look like they've seen a thing or two. Got a little blood. It just hooked them on the bottom jaw. That's what happens. What a good fish though. Unit that <laughs> is, dude. I mean, there's nothing more exciting than how they eat it, too. Oh, coming up, boarded it's just up on straight the surface, up chaos. inhaling it, yep. and then just screaming drag oh, yeah. from the get-go. Absolute that chaos. These things are just pure muscle. Pure muscle. <laughs> Definitely not a trash fish. Definitely everything you want. Oh, yeah. Screaming drag, pulling hard, hard fight, aggressive, just insane explosions. I tell people all Love the time, it. they're up there. Bonefish are pretty awesome. Redfish are obviously what I do most of the year. If jacks were here year round, I don't know that I'd mess with redfish that often. <laughs> they're just the coolest things ever. Heck yeah, dude. <laughs> all right, buddy. See ya. Going to ghost. <laughs> Absolute chaos, dude. I'm telling you, I always tell people, I'm like, <sighs> And you know, I get everything ready. I'm like, look, we're gonna do this. And I don't think people ever believe, or really believe, they don't think they really understand what I'm talking about. When I'm like, look, it's gonna be absolute chaos, first couple casts. Cause they're fish, you know, they've been sitting there all night. Nobody's messing with them. They're pissed off, ready to eat. They got them big eyes too. So that low light really helps them a lot in the morning. But that's why, I mean, as far as top water blow ups go, you're not gonna beat it at all. <laughs> I'm just giddy, bro. That was <laughs> sick. <laughs> I want to do that a few more times. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The Captain's Log with Captain Jonathan Moss, presented by Florida Fishing Products, is brought to you by Florida Fishing Products, Icon Coolers, Denko Flyers, Temple Fork Outfitters, Skinny Water Culture, and Go Castaway Fishing Charters. Oh. Nope, I'm already on it. Oh, get it, get it. <laughs> oh, he's, oh, he pulled off. Just keep going. Oh, right here's the boat, right at the boat. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna pull the whole school over here. Get ready, get ready, get ready. I'm not even gonna throw it far. No, you don't have to. Get it, get it. Oh, <laughs> oh. Oh, the boat, at the boat. <laughs> <laughs> that was so sick, dude. <laughs> Oh my goodness! <laughs> Whoa, bro! Absolute chaos there. Okay. <laughs> That's other easily. Than, other than seeing them blowing up. Oh, yeah. How, I mean, we're just. <laughs> what in the world? How did you find these guys here? I mean, there's a bunch of spots like this. I like this one because it's close. But We um, didn't run far, dude. No, we didn't. We don't have to go far. There's a couple, you know, so that tall bridge over there to the east of us. Um, Katrina wiped out pretty much 90% of the whole bridge. Hurricane Katrina in 2006. And then they took all the pieces of that and made 10 to 15 different reefs all around the place. 
And um, that's kind of so what structure. Yeah, the structure. It's not even really reefs. They just dump pylons on the bottom, like concrete. Yeah. And you took a, a you to know, put that debris somewhere. Yeah, you took you know, 100 square miles of mud and dump a bunch of concrete on the bottom. And the jacks, they love structure. Everything I've ever learned about them is they love structure. They love rocks. They love concrete walls. Dude, another pretty one. <laughs> you should have told me I'd have brought a bigger net, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I usually don't even use a net much. Golly. I usually just grab them, but it is easier. I feel like it's better on the fish too than me trying to manhandle them. Support them. them. Wow. <laughs> shoulders. Oh I mean, yeah. Just pure power. And they get so wide too. They don't really travel a lot right now. I think they're just kind of feeding up before they spawn. They sit in areas. If they could find some area they could sit in the current and eat, that's it. They're just gonna sit there, eat. Spawning time comes, they go out, they leave the lake, um, hit deep passes and all, and they can travel. I mean, there's no telling that this fish isn't gonna swim 60 miles. Oh, oh there he God goes. he goes, he wanted back in, dude. <laughs> That's what they do. That's See? a powerful fish, man. There's not much control yeah. in him usually. He's slick, too. <laughs> he was ready. I'm ready to do that a few more times. <laughs> so awesome. Oh yeah, it's wild. All right, now it is your turn. I'll throw the teaser. And uh, we'll get a couple more. All right, that sounds good. <laughs> The Tackle Box Tip with Captain Jonathan Moss, presented by Icon Coolers. All right, so let's talk about what we use today here in Louisiana on Lake Pontchartrain for these giant Jack Crevel. This is my tarpon rod. This is the, a heavy duty, a lot of backbone, a lot of drag, rod and reel. This is the TFO Tactical Inshore. It's the eight foot mag heavy paired with the Florida Fishing Products. Resolute 8000 series reel, 50 pound braid, and the craziest part, 150 pound leader. 150 pound leader. And these giant beat up poppers. So much fun, so intense. So let's talk about why we use this kind of tackle and we use these, this heavy, heavy leader. We're fishing, and most of the day we're fishing in seven to 10 feet of water. But out in this body water, there are, there's structure, there's busted up concrete that's loaded in barnacles. These Jack Crevel aren't afraid of leader size. They're not leader shy. Most of your inshore fish, you know, when we're fishing in the inlets for, uh, for snook or for fishing the beach for tarpon, we're going from 40 to 60 pound leader. Sometimes we bump up to 80. It depends on the water clarity, and it depends on if the fish are leader shy. If the fish are really leader shy, then of course we're gonna lower that we're gonna play that game of, can I lower the leader to where they still eat it, but still not get broke off? That's the fine line. But with these Jack Crevel, they're mean, they're mad. They get angry at this popper and they don't care about this leader size. But because of the structure in the water covered in barnacles, these fish are hanging by these, these, this structure. They know exactly where to go to break you off. So we're using this heavier tackle, this heavier leader size and these big meat sticks, if you will, to stop these fish, to break these fish, to turn them and to get them to come to the boat. And even then, these guys, if you want to test tackle, go up against some of these 20 to 40 pound Jack Revell and they're going to show you if your tackle and handle it. And the TFO Tactical Inshore, the giant popper looks terrible and the Resolute Reel from Florida Fishing Fox got it done. This is a rod and reel combo that you can use for tarpon, for cobia, for bull reds, for big snook and inlets, and of course these giant Jack Revell here in Lake Pontchartrain, Louisiana. There they are. Get him, get him, there it is! Yeah, man! <laughs> Put that heat on him, Ty! I'm getting popper out of the way. There you go. We always run that fine line of 
breaking their spirit right away, which usually puts all your tackle to the test. <laughs> I tell people all the time, I'm like, you want tackle tested? I'll test tackle for you. Well, you're definitely on some bruisers, brother. <sighs> I mean, that drag is locked and he is still pulling it out on me. Dude, it's good to see you pulling on one. <laughs> oh, you know, just fighting fish first thing in the morning. <laughs> I'm glad it's overcast, bro. I'm already dripping. <laughs> These fish are putting this on a workout. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> what I always tell people. Boot the camp apple, on steroids. <laughs> the apple a day thing. It's a jack, a, a jack a day. Probably won't keep the doctor away. You probably end up in a hospital. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, these reels are pretty damn light. But this thing's putting the work to them. There he is. Oh. Sick. Another little guy. Let me scoop him up. Happy fish though. That's what we like. Come on, little girl. In the net. Oh. <laughs> Golly! Look at that stinking fish, bro. What a toad. What a toad. <laughs> a good one there. Got a little battle scar on top oh, of him, too. I don't want it to fall <laughs> yeah. in the water. Yeah, it got something. Yeah, he probably got, probably got bit by a shark. I mean, it's healed up. Yep. It shows just the tenacity, the resilience, the oh, yeah. power of these. I mean, look at this. My That's hand is completely open. <laughs> Big ol' eyes. Such a mean fish. I mean, I think pound for pound, I mean, I'm no tuna fisherman, but uh, these are the baddest dudes that, as bad as they come in the water by us. Heck yeah. Heck it's yeah, even cooler bro. at, I mean, I catch them right here in my backyard. That's why I love the lake so yeah. much. Even got a little bite. That kind of looks like a shark bite right there, honestly. Yeah. Small shark. We get a lot of small bulls, like small baby bull sharks. They kind of use it as a nursery, too. What a beast, bro. Oh, yeah, yeah. Such Absolute a cool giant. little fishery right here, dude. <laughs> this is this is a hidden gem, man. This is so much fun. Oh, yeah. I love it. I love when people tell me, they're like, man, I don't really like jacks. I'm like, you will after, you this will after I show you this. I mean, if you get mad about something, 20 to 30 take pounds. Take up golf. Go yeah, take up golf. You don't need to be fishing. That's Whatever you something else. But this, this, <laughs> that, if you love the excitement of topwater fishing, oh, yeah. the explosion, the fight, the whole, everything, that fish has it, dude. Yeah, there's no <laughs> doubt about it. Oh, man. All right, I'm going to send them down. Go on. There he goes. <laughs> Look at that. Get any better, Just, man. Dude, chuckling is so awesome. <laughs> yeah. gonna stop you, Emma. <laughs> it's just the coolest thing ever. They really are. And we're just being snobs trying to get them on top waters too. Yep. I mean, yeah. you could throw you could throw a swim bait all day or a spoon or something and catch all you want. Oh, but it, seeing that explosion. Oh, that's what it's all seeing about. Seeing them chase dude. behind it. Boy, they don't even what? have to hook it half the time. I'm just yeah. get so excited about even it, the ones it. that we we've, we've seen come up on your on your uh -huh. blood. You know, with no hook on it. The ones that have broken off, that have gotten sideways. Oh yeah, look, he was all up in the trash. See your leader? Isn't that crazy? Oh. Thought I was gonna snag him for a second. There we go. Sick, dude! Right in the corner, that's what we like. And bent that hook. Yeah, that is nuts. A little baby six-out hook. Have to try something bigger. <laughs> Golly, dude. <laughs> you know, I love light tackle fishing. Cause it's light tackle and oh, you yeah. get that, but you need heavy, heavy tackle. Oh, and it yeah. just feels like light Super tackle. Super heavy stuff. <laughs> but they're the coolest, baddest fish on earth, man. There's yeah, no yeah. doubt about it. I mean, yeah, look at that dude. thing. Ghetto perm, baby. <laughs> yeah. Stud. Yeah, he's kicking. There he goes. 
See you, buddy. Swim right off. Go. <laughs> that, job. that is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Love it, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know, we, we don't need to go across the world of the Seychelles and throw GTs. We got oh, these no. guys. I tell people oh, all the time, me. I'm like, I'll bring you to oh. do something just as cool as GTs. Water's not as pretty. You don't have the pretty white sand, but it's a hell of a lot cheaper and a whole lot closer. It might be a little bit better. Yep. Heck yeah. That's awesome. I don't think there has ever been a time where I was more disappointed in the weather. The bite was on, the fish were hungry, and chewing everything we threw at them. But before we knew it, the storm was closing in on us, and fast. I was left wishing I could stay longer and also very anxious for my next visit. Anglers should learn something from every fishing trip. And today I learned that no matter how much you prepare, there will still be a few things out of your control. But still, this is why we go. To encounter the unexpected. To give it all we got. To crank the reel handle like it's your last time. All good things must come to an end. So until next time, good game fish. Good game. <laughs>